Right, this video is in response to a, a suspect electronic lock system def malfunction, so um, ESL. So the first job to do is to put the key in, in the ignition, and make sure, obviously the key's not in there at the moment, make sure that the lock is unlocked. I'm not going to go into the procedure of um, drilling out things and making things work, but if you suspect that your lock isn't sounding the same as it normally did, in my case, the lock was a zit, 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 you know, it, it operated like that, but now it's changed its noise, it's a zit, 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 and the lights on the dashboard failed twice. So I suspected that the um, ESL motor is not functioning properly. So as I go through the steps now, feel if if the system is still working in 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 essence, put the key in, turn it to the on position, listen for the noise, then check that the steering is loose. Otherwise, you can't do nothing. It's got to be loose. Then you come to the battery, disconnect the battery which is very important because of the airbag system. So I disconnected the earth terminal there and I popped the, the cover on it to stop it uh, connecting. Um, basically, if you're fairly agile and slim, not like me, <laughs> all you need to do is take the under cover off the car um, underneath with a with a three screws. Now, if you just look at the dashboard first of all on mine, mine's a W204 2.2 diesel. This this is the design of it, if you like. So underneath, forget this. So underneath, you've got the two star bolts which is mentioned in all the other videos that you've got is one there one there then there's two bolts up underneath it's going to be difficult for me to show you but there's the one there's the other all you need to do is slacken those bolts off this one with a knuckle joint on the left this one you can get a ratchet in there 3.8 ratchet with a, a T12 socket don't undo it all the way down, just take it down and leave about two or three th threads present in the both. As I say, you've got to be a bit of a contortionist to do this job. And do the same with these two bolts, but you remove them. And what you'll find then is that the whole steering column is, is moving around back up and down. So basically, I've removed the ESL, here she is. Actually, this is a 2012 vehicle. If I zoom out a bit, if I can. There we go. This is a 2012. So basically, this is mounted in this position above the steering rod. There's the uh, steering lock plunger there. All right. There's the bolt. Now at the moment, it's in the lock position because I've I've tried the ignition to make sure it was working okay. Normally this bolt goes in and out in the unlock position. If it's not like that, if it's not like that, you can't get it off. So with the car in its unlock position, battery disconnected, this bolt moves up and down freely. Right? So you take the bolt off from up underneath the car. Because the steering is dropped the steering column would drop you were able to what I did I put um, an allen key behind behind it which basically I know this is in the wrong elevation but it I pushed in that to, the nut isn't on there then it's off but you push in right the way in which allows the thread to go beyond a piece of metal which is going across there and that allows the whole thing to pop off so that was um, happy days there. Eh? So what I'm going to do now, I've ordered the motor, which is only 
25 quid on uh, eBay. It's a British motor, apparently. I'm going to zip tie this up out of the way safely. I'm not going to put these covers back on. And I'm going to carry on driving the car because it's still drivable. And when the motor comes, I'm going to take those dowels out there for them. Take this off in the workshop. Take those dowels out. Pop the top cover off and the PCB. You find these videos on a lot of uh, on YouTube. It's no point with you going into that. You will find the procedure. I'm going to pop the new motor on. Put the dowels back in. Make sure it works okay. Uh, I may do another follow-up video just to show you the difference in the motor. The sound of the motor. And um, that's it. Happy days. So... I've been messing around here for about two and a half hours now, but the biggest problem I had was taking the connector out of the OBD2 and it was basically just a little lever you pull back. You pull it back and then it comes out. That took me about three quarters of an hour to work that out because I didn't want to break anything. So I'm going to pause this video now and um, I'm going to show you what happens when you turn the engine on and and uh, what happens to the, the plunger and etc. So I'm going to put this video on pause. Right, here we are, I'll be back again. Right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, this is the key, I'm going to pop him in the ignition, battery's re um, set up again. I'm going to put my camera on there and I, you can hear the noise of the motor when it goes in. Here we go. So now he's unlocked, and this bolt goes in an outlock. That's retracted. So if I show you now a little bit of an underside view, when you take the key out, you'll hear the motor inside move, and it pushes the plunger out underneath, and that bolt will become solid. So here we go. Okay. So he moves in, bring him out, he's stuck, and obviously that's the steering lock, and that spring loads down onto the thing, that that retracts out of the way when the keys are in. So that's all I got to tell you really, what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace the motor which sits into there, and um, hopefully the follow up video will sh show you what the noise should sound like so i'll just pop him in again once more so that you can hear the noise right up near it's quite anemic to what it used to be so that's all we got guys so it's quite a simple job which um anybody with a bit of confidence and a few tools the right tools can uh, do themselves you need a 13 mil spanner for that one you need a T12, is it an E12 for the um, E12 for the underside columns, and a 10 mil socket for the battery terminal. Uh, I need a T, I think it's um, a T20 for the screws underneath the parcel shaft, and a posi drive screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver actually. So, anyway, I love you and leave you. Bye now.